the Chris Sims mock draft, and we'll start with number one. And it, usually by this time, we kind of know we right? have a pretty good idea. Yeah, we don't. And it seems like for a long time we've had a good idea. Aiden yeah. Hutchinson has been the name out of the University of Michigan, the, right. the, the edge rusher. Um, but now here we are, just a few days before, and you're here in different places. Wow, that maybe Jacksonville is going to pull a surprise. Yeah, maybe we don't. We don't right. know right now. What do you think? Yeah, well, I'm going to go with Aiden Hutchinson as the number one pick. One, I believe he's truly the best player in the draft, and that's the guy I would take. Now, you know, and so, yes, you know, much as Trayvon Walker, as talented as he is, probably more of a freak athlete, I understand that. Maybe a higher ceiling. I get all that, too. Aiden Hutchinson's film in so many areas is just so good. You know what you're going to get for sure. Yeah, Trayvon Walker, there's that hair of a projection conversation we're talking about. In Jacksonville, here's the real thing that's going on. You know, I do know that there's definitely conversation of tackle or pass rusher. I'm not sure what tackle it is. I mean, I've heard some people say it's Iki Aquanu, maybe whatever. I don't know. But that, that's the rumor percolating around the NFL. Doug Peterson wants to tackle. He wants to emulate what they did in, in Philadelphia, which was we got the biggest, baddest motherfucking offensive line you've ever seen, and we're going to steamroll everybody and try to stop that first. He wants to do that. I think a lot of the rest of the organization wants the pass rusher. They look at it and go, wait, we got Cam Robinson. You know, We got Brandon Scherf. We drafted Walker Little in the second round last year, who to me has phenomenal talent. And again, I don't know what happened in the development this year. So there's that. That's where I go and just go, no, you got to go from the difference making edge guy. And now the other aspect of that is, yeah, we all thought it was going to be Aiden Hutchinson. But to, here's what I thought Aiden Hutchinson, one, I think he's the best player. Two, I thought, hey, Trent Baalke, you know, back in the day, he had Justin Smith. And San Francisco, who mm -hmm. was a real try-hard culture, you know, awesome player right. type of guy that you can depend on and all that. He also drafted Alden Smith. That's where I was just going to go. And then there's the other curveball of, wait, he also drafted Alden Smith, which Trayvon Walker has got a very similar frame and skill set to, to like. So yeah. you're right. And I think there's a lot of people in the NFL right now that think it's down to Trayvon Walker and the tackle. And that'll be interesting. So there's some two cents for you. I don't know where it goes. I'm telling you who I would pick, and I'm giving you a little of the rumors that are out there. I haven't heard enough tangible to know it's Trayvon Walker for me to change my pick that mm -hmm. way. So I'm just not going to do it. But I understand that's out there, and if people are trying to make a mock, then you take that into consideration and do as you may please. And if people listen to your edge rushing rankings, right. you don't think that Aiden Hutchinson doesn't have a high ceiling. You think that in, in three or four or five years, he could be the best edge rusher in the NFL? No, without question, he has that capability. The one thing he has the definite capability is just being one of the best edge players in football. Like I said, do I wish his pass rush was a hair better? Sure. sure. You know, coming around the edge, a little bit more bend, all of that. But he makes up with it in so many other areas. He's as quick of an athlete as I've ever seen at that size. I've never seen a guy that twitchy and quick. And like we talked about at the time, speed or quicks to power was a like a new thing to me. I was like, I've never seen a guy win with quicks to power so much where he gets a guy going, oh, no, he's going to shake me. He's going to shake me. And then he puts his head and his arms in his chest and pushes him back that way. And then the run game disruption. He is a hell of a player. Yeah. He is a hell of a player. What do we call that, Pete? Shake and shove? Shake and shove or shake no. and bake? Shake, shake and, and bake? bake? Yeah, right. Something right. like that. Like right. Shake and bake. Shake and and Aiden bake. Hutchinson, who you think or you have mocked as your number one pick in the NFL draft. So yeah. then for the Detroit Lions at number two, I mean, is it almost easy for them? What do you, I mean, do they just take the guy that's uh, that's not there off the edge? I, but, I believe so. They okay. got to. I mean, to me, the edge is the, they need somebody to make a, that can be a difference maker on their defense, right? You're a Lions fan. Who the hell can make a play in a big moment to ever like take the pressure off nobody yeah. right so they that to me is what they did your offensive line is good so i know we're not i hope we're not looking at an offensive line there it's a very good offensive line they should be happy with that we need to get some playmakers on the defensive side of the ball trayvon walker i'm sure they would love him i mean again i they're a team that i think is going to be happy to get either one and i got trayvon walker going there to detroit i would think the fan base would love if jacksonville took Trayvon Walker and now Aiden Hutchinson's up around home and Michigan and oh my gosh that would be a great thing for Detroit to kind of have that be you know behind them and that backing Trayvon Walker yeah. out of Georgia yeah. number two we were not talking about him being a top of the first round talent maybe a month ago right he has shot up draft boards people think it's just because of the combine no but it's more than that it's more than that you know I, it, to me it's one of those where you know again 
it bothers me at times with evaluators that what why was he at pick 30 back three months ago why what 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 did you see to move him up? Oh, that's right. You just talked to a bunch of people and they changed your mind. You went, they know more than me, so I'm going to listen to them. You know, that, that's what happened. So, again, it goes back to our unqualified people making a lot of qualifying statements. You know, I think once the real evaluators, the important ones, start to evaluate not only the athlete, but then you take into account, again, what we've discussed. The way they played defense did not do Trayvon Walker any, any favors at all. It didn't really show what he's all about. I still sit here and tell you that if they just said, hey, go out to a wide 10-9 technique, put your hand in the ground, and then just rush to the six-yard point behind the center and just f***ing ruin every play, he would have been you know, a, a huge different player where every would have popped to everybody. So you got to be able to see that stuff. But these guys are, are awesome players. So you got Edge going 1-2. Edge, two. Edge. Edge, Edge. Goes to number three. Yeah. The Houston Texans on the clock. Yeah, Houston Texans. Listen, now it's to me it's goes tackle time. And you know me, I'm an Evan Neal fan. I believe that's the best tackle in the draft. I feel like with Houston, here's one. I'm going to say they go Iki Aquanu. I feel like that's just more their cup of tea. Again, so I'm just giving everybody my logic. First off with Houston, you know, they have a little flexibility to maybe want to move Iki to guard for a year if they wanted to do something like that. But they have tackle issues. You know, you got the Tunzel. You know, they, they had Marcus Cannon at right tackle. He's up there in age and not like a special player anymore. You know, I would think that's the direction they want to go. It's a good culture, slam dunk, maybe one of the safest picks in the draft. And again, too, if you wanted to get – and if you wanted to oh, – and, and Cannon's gone. So that's I, – I forgot about that, too. So he's out of there. So you got that. And then, you know, two guys on the inside, Titus Howard, Sharping. You know, there's, there's some flexibility to play it out the first year. But I think Icky's the cleanest. He's the safest one. Run game, the film totality like we talked about last week. You know, his film is better than Evan Neal's. I gave Neal the advantage because of what we talked about. The pass protection I thought was off the charts. For a team that needs a whole bunch. Yeah. You know, and you got and the I forgot three. Cannon was out of there. And you got the number three yeah. pick. Sometimes a fan base is going to want that that sexy pick. Yeah. But we, we've just seen how how – you can build the team, you know, because they're not. We don't expect Houston to be competing for a playoff spot next I, year. I don't expect that. No, this is still a process. I mean, how, you know, yeah, they did a lot of good things last year, building some depth on their football team. They got a base and pretty good. And you know, now I think they're trying to get into let's finish it off and start getting some better players and some difference makers there. And I just think that's the one that makes the most sense for them at that position at number three. Uh, I mean, you know, I I don't envision them being – a corner, all right, just because, like, hey, Lovey Smith, from everything in his history, he doesn't believe in man-to-man -man shutdown corners. That's not what he plays. He likes to play zone. He went to Tampa Bay and became the head coach and was like, why are we paying Darrell Rivas $75 trillion? I'm, I'm playing cover two. Okay, let's get him out of here. And that's what happened, right? So I don't think he believes in that. The pass rusher thing, they're not horrible in the defense end department. Yeah, there's no superstar there. But I also go, I don't know if that's the philosophy of their football team either to think like Lovey Smith or even Nick Casario to go that route. Mm -hmm. So that's where I go O-line and I come to the logic of Icky. And, of course, it makes sense too. That, that would be tough to go edge there too if you got the number three overall pick in the draft and you end up with the third best edge rusher or edge I, it's, player it's, at his position. I, I, I think so. I don't know if I would have the bit. guts right, to pick a, uh, another edge rusher at think number he's three. the best, right. but exactly. it's right. unlikely. So right. you got the tackle, Iquanu from NC State going three, no corner there. Do we go defensive back for the Jets at four? Yeah, uh, we're going defensive back. I, I don't think you could pass this up when you just talk about the player and then you talk about um, the need on the football team. And that's where, yeah, going Sauce Gardner all the way. Out of Cincinnati. Out of Cincinnati. Sauce Gardner, I mean, what more can you say about the guy? The guy's he's a phenomenal football player. You know, he's got attitude. There's just not a like I said at the time, there's just not a lot of humans on earth that are that are like him. To be that tough, that twitchy, you know, can really run, to be that long, you know, change directions the way he does, 
really competes. You could tell it means something to him. You know, to me, he's that guy. He's that DB that not only can shut guys down, he fits what they want to do schematically and has some of those Richard Sherman you know, measurables that fit that Seattle three so well. And then when they want to do play, man, he can do that. And then has that attitude to me that's like a corner that can be infectious to a football team and a fan base. I mean, can't you picture the Jet fans all just being sauce, sauce, <laughs> sauce, guard, sauce, yeah. you know, in between beers. In a beers good and, and bad way. Exactly. You know, depending yeah. on if the play is good or bad. Exactly yeah. right, right, right. Uh, yeah, you you were high on. He's your number one corner. He's right? my number sauce one corner. corner. That's it. That was pretty much, that was easy. Yeah. He was, he's special. He's a special football player. You say that was easy, but uh, over at NFLMockDraftDatabase.com, yeah. they do great work. They kind of compile all the different mock drafts that are out there. And there are 7 million mock drafts out there, I think. We're going to make $7 million in one here today. Um, but they, they accumulate all of them and say, all right, who's the consensus pick? Which one has, you know, a, appears here more often than not? They got Kayvon Thibodeau at four there. We don't see Kayvon Thibodeau here at four for you. We, your, your feelings on him, him have been made fairly I, clearly. I, I, just, I just, yeah, my feelings, I feel like. The, we'll get to I, him later, too. I know. I just feel like the Jets, too. Again, with the board the way it is right now, I wouldn't want to leave Sauce Gardner out there any longer. Like, if you're planning on waiting to 10 and you think you might get him, you're in trouble. Somebody's going to steal him. All right? And then, to me, again, yeah, they need a pass rusher. I get you. There's a lot of good ones in the draft. You know, I think they have some good ones on their roster. And I, I, to me, again, uh, what, what I would say is, man, just knowing that crew there, the Jets from the 49ers, I just don't think that would be their cup of tea with the edge rusher guy anyways. You know, to me, that, that's just not what they are. They are. Uh, and, uh, to me, uh, again, it's a good player out there. We'll discuss that as we go here. But right. I don't think that's the kind of guy they want anyways. Jets at four yeah. with a corner. Giants on the clock. At five, their first of two picks in the top seven. Yep, and I'm. this is where I'm going. Evan Neal, the best tackle in the draft. I don't think there's any doubt about that, in my opinion, as far as pass protection is concerned. And, you know, again, there, there's a de- they need to do something on the offensive line. I think it's too good to pass up right here. You know, to me, it's yeah, Evan Neal, Charles Cross, both on the board. I'm going to go with Evan Neal. He's a little bit more – he's more polished. He's a more sure thing than, like, you've heard me talk about. His ability to, to – uh, pass protect is as good as it gets. And, you know, again, he's a road grader in the run game. You know, when, when he's on and doing things all the right way, I mean, he's he, nobody blows people back more than, uh, than Evan Neal, in my opinion. So to me, there's also great potential there to even get better, and it was good already. I mean, it really was. I just think you get that, yes, you give Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley a yeah. chance, and uh, I think it's just a desperate need, and it's a can't-miss pick here for them. Saquon's already been talking about how he's going to have a bust-out year. I hope Imagine so. running behind Evan Neal Whoa. or Saquon Barkley. No question. I mean, you know, I think him, Andrew Thomas, you know, and, and – uh, the rest of the crew that they could put there together, they could give the Giants, at least in Daniel Jones, a fighting chance and, and have some time to pass and throw the ball down the field a little bit this year. Fellow noted Giants fan, along with yourself, Pete Demolemolitis, thanks you for putting your best de- offensive tackle to your favorite team. Well, yeah, and, you know, again, I, I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't think, I wasn't going in this going, I'm going to put my favorite player. I really didn't. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah, I'm going to will it into existence. I was more of, um, I just, again, you heard what I said. I could see most of the NFL having Iki Aquanu as the number one guy. Sure. And I just think this Houston will be infatuated with all those type of things, the, knowing that group in New England up there. That Yeah, they'll take him over at Evan Neal. All right, two tackles off the board. We go to number six, Carolina Panthers on the clock. It's It's got to be tackle again. Now, here's Ooh. how we get in the conversation again. Here we go to the quarterback thing. This is where we can start, right, and talk. You know, but two things. I mean, the head, this coaching staff cannot want to take a quarterback at six. I'm just no way could they want to take one. Why would they want to take a quarterback and have to deal with that and their asses get fired and do all that? Because this is a make or break year. It's a you make think, or break year. So to me, from that standpoint, re- let alone right there, just bam, how could you want to do that? And then you know, I've heard out there that yes, this is certainly a thought in the organization too. That that's like, well, yeah, the coach doesn't want to do that. He doesn't. Now, I don't know if the owner can trump him at this point, if he's going to like that. I don't think there's a quarterback there that's worth this year at pick number six. And like I talked about, you know, again, to me, the the top two quarterbacks 
which are, are, are Corral and Malik Willis, in my opinion, you're not going to throw them out there next year and just expect them to hit the ground running and carry the team anyways. Yeah, okay, Kenny Pickett's the guy, but we talked about Kenny Pickett, is, again, it doesn't to me, it does not have anywhere near top 10 talent in the NFL draft type of thing. So that's where I'm going to go tackle Charles Cross from Mississippi State. Huge need for their football team. Again, their roster, when you look at it, is put together pretty well. It really is. I mean, across the board. It was a playoff defense right. last year for you know, most of the year. I know some people see – I hear see, see some people go, oh, they might go pass rusher. And I want to go, well, I mean – they got Brian Burns, who's one of the best pass rushers in football, and they drafted Yuter Grossmanos in the second round. At some point, they, he's got to play and be the guy. And, and and so that's where I just look at it and go, no. And then, hey, they had Cam Irving playing tackle for them last year. It was less than. This is a huge need for their football team. Cross a little raw, but big-time talent. You know, big-time talent. One of those guys that, you know, again, if, if it all goes right, maybe he's the best of the group when all said and done. But I think they go tackle there all the way. You do see some people put Cross as the best tackle. There's people in the in NFL who believe that he's going to be the best one when all said and done. I don't. But, yes, I know there is some teams out there that think he's the guy that maybe has the most potential. Pete reminds us that the Chicago Bears with Matt Nagy on a make or break year <laughs> last year did go out on a limb and take yeah. a quarterback in the right. first round, right. Justin Fields. Right. Maybe a higher upside quarterback. You know, we don't to a lot of the NFL maybe. Yeah, yeah. Although higher upside. High There's him, real but. tangible elite trait with Justin Fields, yeah. like we talked about at the time. But it didn't work out for Matt you know, Nagy. No, it didn't work out for Matt Nagy. Again, why would you want to do that? And I think Matt Nagy played it almost in the the opposite. I think he looked at it like, wait, I made the playoffs twice. I think if I get this and show a little progress with this guy, they're all going to go, let's not upset the apple cart. Everything's going good with Justin Fields, and that might save me another year, give me another year of wiggle room. Yeah. I really feel like that's why Chicago did it to a degree. It was almost the opposite. You know, There's no wiggle room here. Chicago had some wiggle room. I mean, yeah, they did. They went to the playoffs two out of three years. It wasn't because of the offense. We know that. But – yeah, so this is a little bit of a different story altogether. But, yeah, you're right. There is a team that we've seen do it, but their ass ain't there anymore either. All right, so no quarterback off the board in the no. top six here. Be curious to see when you take the first mm -hmm. one here in your mock draft. Yep. The Giants' second pick in two picks here, number seven overall on the clock. This is where I'm going Jermaine Johnson, the second Florida State. That's This, to me, again, the Giants need a pass rusher. They got plenty of big people. In the middle of their defense, Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, they're fine in that department. Now, I don't think there's a corner on the board here that's worthy of taking. They still got Bradbury. Uh, so I look at that. You've addressed the offensive line. To me, it's now like, can we get somebody off the edge for Wink Martindale's defense that could be a Matthew Don, Zadarius Smith type of guy on the edge? And that's where I just feel like Jermaine Johnson fits it perfectly. One, he's... You know, one of the most naturally gifted pass rushers in football. Two, the way he plays the run, stand-up linebacker, some of the things that he does on the football field, I think are just like a Baltimore Ravens defensive guy is going to go, oh, this is perfect for us. This is what we like. You know, I, I, I talked to Jermaine Johnson last week. I mean, what he learned at Georgia – is so much what he'll have to do with the Ravens Giants type defense that he'll be playing in with holding people up and reading the plays and doing all that. And he's phenomenal at that, let alone we know he can rush the passer. So that to me was just easy and makes sense. You did talk to him. Yeah. You liked him. I liked him. And now you're putting him on your favorite I team know, look again. At me. <laughs> no, you are higher on him than than most other people. And I think he's mocked to go maybe somewhere, you know, mid first round. Right. Um, but you, you feel like teams are, are wise to Jermaine Johnson and what he did last I, year. I do feel like there is, yes. I, I have uh, enough feedback to know that, yeah, I don't think I'm going crazy here with, in this spot right here by putting him there. You know, again, yeah, where he falls mid-first round, few picks later, I don't know. If a few things change, maybe that could change to where he drops down a little bit. But I don't see him falling too far. And I think part of the reason where you see him where you're talking about too is the – Kayvon Thibodeau oh, effect. Yeah. It's sure. just nobody can get off the Rivals.com high school ranking and where he was ranked four years ago, so we just got to keep him there. So that's where, to me, that 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 is why I said to start this whole process up. Stingley and Thibodeau are going to be the ones I look at to be the changers in the draft with the quarterback and how things fall out.
And I always think it's funny, too, because people are like, well, he's more of a 15 pick than a 7 pick. And the team that's picking 7 is like, well, we don't pick at 15, and we like the guy. So what are we supposed to do? Just yeah. not take him no, I, I, 8 picks later? I, 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 yeah. If you've got a guy him. and a need, yeah. that you you got a guy of the high grade and a need, you do it. You don't go, oh, well... Man, we might be four picks too high on this <laughs> right. one. That, to me, is nitpicking, and you're stupid, and then you're in danger of losing that guy if you want to trade down three or four spots or whatever. That, you're, you're risking a lot there. Atlanta's a team that might trade a bit in the first round here. We got uh, their pick at number eight on the clock. Atlanta's one of the hardest teams to figure out. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't envision them going quarterback here. I don't. I don't see that happening. All right? Um, I am one that goes, ooh, man, Matt Corral makes a lot of sense for their football team. Play action team, want to just throw aggressive lasers down the field. That's what he does. That's what he did. That's what he will always do. He fits that to me. Atlanta has so many needs on their football team. I just can't imagine them reaching for a quarterback here. That's the biggest thing. I have no feel for what Atlanta is going to do at eight. None. I have no idea, just to let you know. I know people have put the receiver out there. That's part of the thing. Uh, again, there's one guy I would take maybe at number eight at receiver, all right? And that's Jamison Williams. It's the only guy I would take, mm-hmm. all right? But he is as an ACL injury. They're not going to be able to depend on him early in the year at least. So maybe they could go there. I know there's a real need at that position. I get that. But at mul- ultimately, I'm going Jordan Davis from Georgia. Defensive tackle. Defensive tackle. Uh, as I've told you, this is a freak of nature. It's one of the freakiest guys in the draft. To me, you want to set a culture and a safe pick, you know, and start accumulating some players and a team and start building something, a nucleus. Jordan Davis makes a lot of sense to me. I think he's phenomenal. Like I said, Vita Vea was, what, pick 12 a few years ago in the draft. I think he's better than Vita Vea. He's a freak. Jermaine Johnson, I talked to him. I go, oh, who's the what freakiest guy at Georgia? That you're, oh, well, it's got to be Jordan Davis. Oh. So uh, just the film – what they need, Dean Pease, they're playing a defense that needs big people in the middle. They don't have that. Grady Jarrett's a smaller, you know, disruptive type of guy. They don't have a guy that can take on double teams and overpower people and push the pocket. I love Jordan Davis. So that's where I'm going there. Uh, I think it's a huge need for their football team. I don't see offensive line matching up here at this pick or anything like that. Like I talked about, the receiver, quarterback, certainly a conversation. Uh, But this is one I got no feel for, and I'm going to kind of go off of my board, what I think, and I'm going Jordan Davis. So the top eight picks are in. If you're watching the draft live on Thursday, we're probably two and a half hours, three hours into the program. Uh, Do we have a recap of the one through eight? Chris Sims here to take a little pause to recap. You got Aiden Hutchinson going number one off the board of the Jaguars. Uh, even though the rumors out there that it might be Walker, it might be a tackle, who knows? Uh, there's your top eight, and interestingly enough, you got two Georgia players in the top eight. Yeah, that team was stacked. It stacked. seemed like every position group we went through, there's one or two Georgia guys that yeah. were worthy of discussion. As we go now to number nine, the Seattle Seahawks on the clock. <sighs> Seattle's a hard one. So here we go. To me, this is Seattle. Seattle to me. Here's the team where I think there's a connection with Seattle and Oregon, the school, Mm -hmm. right? I've heard – here's two things here. Connection with Seattle and Oregon. I don't know what the connection is. Proximity. Ed Orgeron and Pete Carroll have a relationship. All right, so there's Derek Stingley. They could use a corner. They could use a pass rusher. And they could use a lot of things, as we've discussed. I mean, Seattle's got a lot of needs on their roster. They really do. So here's one where, again, I understand this is the first place I look at to go, this could be Kayvon Thibodeau, this could be Stingley. I wouldn't do it. There's no doubt about it. But if you're thinking about making a mock bet and betting on points bet or mock draft and doing a points bet, perfect 10 type of thing that we'll talk about here in a minute, <laughs> all right, then maybe you want to think about Thibodeau. Or St- Stingley. I'm going Devontae w- Wyatt from Georgia. That's where I'm going to go. The other defensive tackle. The other defensive tackle. The other guy. The guy that fits what they want to do up there in Seattle. The guy that's extremely disruptive, can be, you know, a Michael Bennett, the play up type of force for their defense. Uh, you know, again, they, they got, they have some guys that are solid or good edge rushers. All right. 
some guys I think you could depend on. And then, you know, some of them, LJ Collier, you know, they got, uh, um, let, me, let me pull up their roster. Um, the kid, uh, Taylor, they, they drafted from Tennessee a few years ago to where I came to it and went, listen, I know they can use a pass rusher. I understand that. But felt like it was not desperate, desperate. All right. I understand the corner thing. I wouldn't take any of the corners there. I would not take Derek Stingley there for the reasons that everybody's heard me say. I understand that some people in football love him, and I get it. I see it. They love the feet. They love the hips. It's amazing. They love 2019. They love 2019. So and to me, Chris Sims just can't get behind. Wait, weird. film was good three years ago. It got worse two years after that. I can't get behind. I just can't. So that's where it bothers me. But here, LJ Collier, Rasheem Green, Alton Robinson, Darrell Taylor, you know, again, not guys that you're going to look at and go, oh, man, they're unbelievable football players. But I'm going to go, no, they're damn good players. They're damn good. All right. Defensive tackle, they got some size guys. Puna Ford, Brian Moan, Quentin Jefferson's there. They got Kendichi. Yeah, Shelby Harris a little bit. Shelby Harris they got from the Denver trade. But to me, no, like, guy that can just muck a play up and do a whole bunch of things on the defensive side of the ball. And that's where I go Devontae Wyatt. You know I love him. I mean, he might go higher than this, in my opinion. Maybe maybe I'm low here. Um, but this is one of the more interesting picks of the draft, and I'm going Seattle, Devontae Wyatt. Three Georgia D linemen in the top nine. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I wonder why they were so good last year. I, it's it's really <laughs> amazing. It's the greatest defense in college football, that's amazing, for sure. Yeah. Right? And, and I think legitimately, I mean, you look at, hey, N'Kobe Dean – I think Quay Walker, of course, who I think's better than Nicobe Dean. Lewis Sein, 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 the safety scene. Sorry, I always mess him up. You know, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if all three of those went. You know, it's they'll, they'll be dicey. There's an end of the first round type of guys, but it wouldn't be shocking. So we go to 10 now. The Jets have another pick. You had him taking Sauce Gardner, the corner at four. What do you see him doing at 10? Gosh, well, the Jets, here we go. It's, uh, it's receiver. It's receiver. It's receiver. It's receiver. Who's it going to be? I don't know. Jamison Williamson's the best receiver in the draft. I don't think really anybody in football disagrees with that. Uh, not that I know of. I really haven't talked to one person that goes, Jamison Williams is the best. The period. receiver out of Alabama. Alabama. ACL injury. He, exactly. ACL injury, you know. Uh, late in the year in the national championship game. Um, I'm having them take him. I am. I'm going Jamison Williams here. Again, the play is not about what he can do for a year. What could he do for me in week three of this year? F week three of this year. What can he do for you in week 13 this year and next year in week three and mm -hmm. then the year after that? That's what we're looking at to like maximize the guy, right? So I just look at that and go, the guy's too talented. You know, He's a real, in my opinion, difference maker. I think he's every bit as good as Devontae Smith last year. In fact, I, I might think he's better actually, as the time went on. I really think as the draft process went on and the more I saw him and stuff, I went, I think I like him more than Devontae Smith last year. I, I, to me, it just they're not desperate at receiver. It's not like, oh, my gosh, we got to have – like it's not a Green Bay situation. Right. This is one where you just go, man, we just want one more guy and we're going to be really dangerous with our biggest investment, with our quarterback, and let's do it. And that's where I'm going to go that. Drake London, would he be in this conversation? I could certainly see him being there. He's very high in the NFL circles because of the size and the route running. You know, He scares me a little with the speed like we talked about. I think he could be a guy maybe in the running for this pick here, too. But I, if I'm the Jets, I'm going Jamison Williams. You pair up Jamison Williams yeah. with your guy, Zach Wilson, right. and you are flipping your allegiance from the Giants over to the Jets. <laughs> You've I'm liking them switched. a lot. I'm liking them a lot. I know that. I already do like the Jets. I can't help not like the Jets. I'm that weird Giants fan that actually likes the Jets, too, <laughs> because of, yes, the quarterback and the people that work there. You know, Again, so I'm sorry. I'm a human. You know, I've known some of them for a long time, and I believe in them, and they're good people. So yeah, I root for the Jets. All right, so that's the top 10 right there. Yeah. And if Chris is exactly right with his top 10, Jay Croucher from Points Bet will give you $100,000. Actually, I think Chris is probably ineligible, right? Pete? Darn it. We, yeah, Chris might be ineligible Why? for this. Why? It shouldn't be. It but should be eligible. If you out there are listening to this, and look at that, look at that picture of Chris there with a, t with a tie in the cheeks, <laughs> the high cheekbones and the haircut, perfectly groomed. Professional. Professional. NBC picture to that this year. <laughs> Uh, but if you take Chris's picks and they are exactly right, you can win 100K from PointsBet. So if you've been listening to the pod over the last few weeks, you know that Chris has been giving you insight, analysis to help make you smarter 
when it comes to the draft. Our partners at PointsBet have been PointsBet have been listening as well, Chris, and they have cooked up a contest that you will not find at any other sports. Book. Any other, the PointsBet Perfect Ten presented Ooh. by yours truly. Chris Sims. Ooh. Yes, that jerk Chris Sims you. is presenting this to you. Why perfect 10, you ask? Yeah. Because that's exactly what you'll need to be okay. perfect, okay? And selecting picks 1 through 10 on Thursday night. And if you're perfect, you can win $100,000 and free bets from PointsBet. And, I mean, damn, if you're perfect, I'm going to call you next week and tell you you're perfect, too. I'm going to add that on top of the wow. prize. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm going to be like, yeah, we're going to have you on the pod, actually. If you're perfect and you win $100,000, we're going to have you on the pod and call you a genius and then also <laughs> like tell you, let's rub it in on points bet. And you stole 100000 from them. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's rub it in. What are we going to spend it on? What I if it's know. like 10 people? What I, if it's like it's something crazy? We're like going to have a busy pod next week, okay? <laughs> That's uh, what we're going to do. So here's what you got to do. You got to go to pointsbet.com or you download the app. If you're a new user, you enter the code HOMIE. You get those two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Once you're signed up, or if you're already a PointsBet user, you go over to that promos page, opt in to the PointsBet Perfect 10 contest. After opting in, you go over to the 2022 draft betting markets. And so you're going to see those individual bet markets for each picks, one through 10 there, Chris. Yeah, all right, cool. So that's good. I'm glad you're doing this and explaining this a little bit better because you're <laughs> yeah. way smoother. And than, if you need to me. go back and listen to that again, which I might have to Yeah, do, we got rewind. Uh, we all got rewind. From there, place 10 bets with the stake, with the stake of your choosing. All right, it can be as low as 50 cents. All right? Yeah. All right, 50 cent. Don't be in the club. Yeah. You'll need to place exactly <laughs> one bet each for yeah. picks one through 10. All right, so everybody got that? You'll need to ex place exactly one bet each for picks one through 10. Get your bets in prior to 9 a.m. Eastern on Thursday. So you got to get it in 9 yep. a.m. Eastern Thursday. Early, early in the out. morning. Yeah, early, early in the morning. morning. Don't get wait your for ass those up. rumors. Don't wait right. for those rumors an hour get before. Get up, watch pro football talk at 7 a.m. <laughs> and as you're doing that, get in your perfect 10, send it in, and then sit back, relax, and wait to see mm -hmm. if you'll be $100,000 richer yeah. and friends with Chris Sims and Ahmed Fareed. Exactly. You'll be on the pod, a recurring <laughs> that might guest. Be, that might have ruined it right there. They might be like, damn, I wanted $100,000. i would rather not. Do I, I got to talk to these guys, though? They, they go, can I opt out of the friendship <laughs> uh, between Chris and Ahmed? Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.